Compost Importance of compost Compost is a means of returning life to our soils. Materials that are normally considered waste are mixed together and are then broken down by the action of bacteria and fungi in the presence of oxygen to form an amazing alternative to fertilizer. Thermal compost. The compost that we will be making is thermal compost and will get very hot. This heat is important as it will kill all weed seeds and pathogens. The smallest thermal compost heap should be about a 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5 meter pile, which will ensure the compost gets hot in the center. It is also small enough for a few people to work in a few hours. It will be enough to sustain a quarter hectare of maize. Ingredients to make compost. Green material. Green materials are important for our compost because they contain sugars which are used to produce more bacteria. Any green material is good, even if it has already dried or contains seeds. Examples are grass, leaves and weeds. The green material should make up 40% of the total material. Dry material. The dry materials are also important for bacteria and fungi growth. Dry material should also include a percentage of sticks or woody material which allow the compost pile to breathe by giving it structure. Some good examples of dry material are maize stover, leaves, straw or grass, sticks and seed pods. The dry or brown material needs to be 40% of our total materials, but needs to consist of at least 5 to 10% of woody materials. Nitrogen. Compost needs a nitrogen source to feed the bacteria as they grow. There are many different nitrogen sources, but the most easily available to most people is manure. The animal dung from a kraal or an overnight pen is best as it also has animal urine. Another common nitrogen source is the material from legumes like beans. This can be cut green like lucerne or wattle or be dried as in bean pods or stalks. Keep your high nitrogen plant materials separate from your other plant materials to ensure you are able to mix it in the right ratios. You would need five to eight wheelbarrows of manure, depending on whether it's chicken or cattle. For legumes, you would need 20% of the total material. Water. Our compost is alive and needs a fair amount of water. Water is possibly the most limiting factor in compost production and fetching water can be difficult work so we need to plan the placement of our compost close to a water source or to build it during the rainy season, which would mean less water would need to be carried. Oxygen. The compost needs oxygen to break down properly. We must make sure air can get inside the compost. To do this, we must avoid compacting our compost. Make sure there is some woody material in the compost, turn our compost on time, and avoid adding too much water. Microorganisms. Bacteria are the primary decomposers in our compost and generate the high temperatures. Fungi only populate the compost once it cools to less than 40 degrees Celsius and they decompose harder woody substances. The fungus and microbes that we need are already present in the plant material. It is a good idea to use a mixture of different kinds of plant material. Planning and construction. Try to keep the different materials separate. During summer is the ideal period to begin collecting materials. At this time there is an abundance of green material which is hard to find at other times of the year. Once lots of green, dry and nitrogen materials have been collected, you are ready to begin. Arrange to get water to the site if the site is not close to water. 
A drum is ideal for use in drenching your materials and also helps to not waste water if it is in short supply. Make two 1.5 by 1.5 meter squares next to each other and mark the corners with pegs or poles. Take a mixture of the materials and dunk it into the water, then place it in the square where our pile is to be built. We want to get a good blend of materials as we build. Don't forget to add the high nitrogen material throughout the pile. Manures should be well mixed with water beforehand. Make sure that the sides or walls of the pile are straight and upright. Try to make a cube, not a pyramid. Continue to build the pile to the desired height of 1.5 meters. Managing temperature. Temperature is the most important factor in making good quality compost. The heat of the compost kills any weeds that were in the plant material used. Heat also kills most pests and diseases that were in the plant material. We want to keep the compost between 55 and 68 degrees Celsius. Our goal is to keep our compost at this temperature for as long as possible. After each time we turn the pile, we must monitor the temperature and ensure that it has been hot for at least three days during each cycle. All parts of the pile need to be exposed to this heat. The inside of the pile is much hotter than the outside, which is one of the reasons why turning is important. Each time you turn the pile, you should attempt to move material from the outside to the inside and vice versa. Turning the compost has three main advantages. Managing heat, getting oxygen into the pile, replenishing moisture when the pile begins to get dry. We have devised a simple method of testing and recording the temperature. Find a length of 10 mm round bar at least 1.2 meters long or a piece of 8 gauge wire. This rod or wire is inserted into our compost so that the end is in the center of the pile. It is left there and checked every day. When the rod is removed, be careful. If you grab the end of the rod and are not able to continue holding it, it means that we are definitely in the required zone. If the rod is very hot but you are able to hold it without letting go, then we may be just over the bottom zone of 55 degrees Celsius. If the rod is warm but not very hot, it must be somewhere between 35 and 55 degrees, so the compost is too cold. Keep simple records of your compost. Turning. When to turn. When the compost gets to the right temperature, leave it for three days and then turn it. So we turn based on temperature, not on the time, and we need to keep checking the temperature. How to turn. Begin to break the existing pile and then rebuild it in the second square, already marked by pegs. You can use a fork to loosen it up as you move to the new pile. Add more water if necessary. Do the squeeze test. As you turn, try and make sure that the outside material is moved to the inside and the inside material is moved to the outside. How often to turn? You will need to turn the pile at least seven to eight times during the process. From beginning to end, if all goes well, your compost should be ready in eight weeks. If you don't turn your compost, several things might go wrong. The compost may overheat and kill the bacteria. The compost may run out of oxygen and go bad. The compost may also run out of moisture and cool down too soon. Good compost smells good, is deep, rich brown in color, has a crumbly texture, has visible fungal strands. The squeeze test. 
you can ensure compost has the right amount of water by doing the squeeze test. When you turn the compost, take a handful from the inside of the pile and squeeze it in your hand. If you see droplets of water coming out of the material, it means your compost is too moist. If you can't see water escaping through your fingers and when you open your hand the material keeps the shape that you have moulded, then the moisture is right. If when you open your hand the material falls apart, then it is too dry. Chicken Manure Soup This is a cheap and easily accessible alternative to chemical fertilizer top dressing. Used in conjunction with compost, Foundations for Farming has achieved yields with maize that are comparable to yields from high levels of fertilizer. To make the chicken manure soup, you will require about 35 kgs of chicken manure in a porous bag. This bag should be hung in a 200 litre drum of water for at least three weeks. Stir the soup regularly. Once it is ready, dilute it at a rate of one litre of soup to 10 litres of water. This is a very good top dressing which can be applied to all crops. An application every two to three weeks is ideal. The waste at the end of the process can be added to the compost heap as a nitrogen source. Comfrey tea. With its high levels of potash, comfrey tea can be used as an excellent fertilizer for fruiting vegetables such as tomato, pepper, cucumber and potato. The leaves of the comfrey plant are said to contain two to three times the levels of potassium than cattle manure. To make comfrey tea, pick at least a kg of leaves and place them in a 20 litre bucket. Add enough water to cover them. Seal the bucket and let this stew for two to three weeks. Add more leaves each week as they begin to rot. Once the tea has matured, strain and use at the rate of one litre comfrey juice to 20 litres of water. Use as a foliar feed and soil drench around the plants. The solid wastes can be added to the compost pile.